Let us take ourselves back to 1915, where the British people, the British government, realised that they were in something completely unexpected. A continental war where they were suffering very heavy casualties and with no prospect of any immediate end to it. And men were being buried in shell holes, men were being blown up little plots of graves near the front, uh, further back where the medical units, there were more orderly plots of graves, in the base hospitals, there were graves in cemeteries, and in English villages and towns there were graves of men who died at home. And the movement grew up that something's got to be done to commemorate this terrible thing that's happening to our country. And the good old British tradition, they had a commission. Um, uh, people who were interested and able who established what would become the Imperial War Graves Commission. The Imperial bit is the old name for the Empire. It's not fashionable <coughs> now to call ourselves an Empire. We are a Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is uh, something where everybody agrees on what's going on. The empire is something where half the people don't agree with what they're doing. So, so, um, the Imperial War Games Commission starts planning for the future. And it immediately comes upon two big problems. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. One is that of repatriation. Because men who died on the coast of Boulogne, Etap, not Etap, it hadn't been established yet, Boulogne, Le Trépour, uh, Wimara, uh, prominent families, wealthy families, were coming, paying local undertakers to exhume bodies, take them back to be buried in England. Why not? Why shouldn't you have your son or your husband buried uh, in your local cemetery? It seems a very reasonable thing. And then you've got the other view that hold on, this is something that's more important than individual family wishes. Um, these men are all dying together out in the Western Front uh, or in the base hospital. Over the water, in, we come back to this insular system that the British have, we, we are an island race. Um, maybe it'd be better if they all stayed out there together. And there was a very big argument, and it went on for some time. And they solved it in a, a unique way, a brilliant way. I think it's the nicest story I'm going to tell you the whole week, as far as I'm concerned. <coughs> Two divisions that had been in the Battle of Passchendaele were out at rest, and the general officer commanding were instructed to ask the ordinary soldiers what they would like. Would they like always <coughs> wanted them to go back to England? In fact, it's going to be repatriation or remain in France. And the answer came back from those soldiers almost unanimously. If we die, we would like to stay out here with our friends. And that settled the argument stone dead. There was no more repatriation. Um, there was lots of movement within a country, but the basic rule was that when the cemeteries were established after the war, if a man died in France, he would be buried in France. But very, very occasionally you'll find I mean, in the each reservoir cemetery, there were two brothers, not <coughs> pay no double teeth. One died at Foucault and one died at Eats. And his family managed to persuade him. Uh, so you get very, very tiny um, alterations to the rule. But the general rule is, you die in France, you're buried in France. You can be moved a long way. Um, and that rule was observed until the 1960s, 70s, what was known as the Borneo Confrontation. 